Many thanks for the kind invitation to give this lecture on left main treatment with shockwave. I'll be talking about eccentric calcification in particular and the use of the C2 plus balloon. So the left main is a very important bifurcation that we treat and as you can see the disease usually avoids the flow divider and we have to decide not only how to stent the vessel with one or two stent but we have to work out how we're going to prepare the vessel and calcification is the largest problem that we face because it's much more common as we treat these older patients. Calcium affects how we can stretch the artery and how we can prepare the vessel. And there's a number of obvious uh, complexity that it brings, but probably the most important one is the under expansion of stent, which in this scenario, i.e. left main PCI, is a disaster for the patient. The presence of calcium will obviously affect how we expand the stent itself, and if we have nodule like this, we'll often see asymmetric stent expansion. It's probably more common than we think. The arc of calcium is directly related to how much under-expansion we will have, and that will lead to ischemic events. And from the Excel trial, both surgical and PCI, the degree of calcium will affect those uh, outcome, both at one year and three years. So here's a 72-year-old patient with a calcified left main. I haven't injected any contrast at the moment, but you can see there is a degree of eccentric calcification in the LAD extending back to the left main. In this green box, as you'll see, it opens up. We can, put, we can map that out and it's quite extensive across a long segment of both LED and left main. Now when we start thinking about the injection of contrast and we see the lumen, the lumen profile highlights the fact that there is a stenosis in the LED and there's a stenosis in the distal left main. That's shown in red. So we have to think about how we're going to treat this vessel. There are several options available to us. We could use balloon treatment with non-compliant or cutting or scoring. We could think about rotational atherectomy, which was obviously historical. Laser is an option, shockwaves are clearly an option, and orbital atherectomy is an option. But I think shockwave is my number one treatment here if I can deliver the device. As you'll see, that's actually where we're going to treat. So, this patient's randomized in the optimal left main trial. This is an IVUS versus angiographic trial, and he's randomized to IVUS guided PCI. So what we start with, in fact, is IVUS. As you can see from this IVUS run in the LAT, there is a significant burden of calcium, as we'd expect from the angiogram. It is both eccentric, concentric, and probably to some degree nodular. There is both deep and superficial, as we see both the reverberations of the superficial calcium. But when we get back to the normal uh, vessel in the proximal LAD, we can see that it's a large diameter. I'll run through the diameter shortly. When we bring back into the left main with a continuous run, as you'll see in a second, there is, in fact, quite a severe stenosis in the distal left main stem. And that's really made up of this concentric layer of calcium, which again is both superficial and deep. The left main itself is relatively healthy in the proximal segment. So the imaging has given us some important detailing on that calcium, and we know how we plan to tackle it. And then we can make some measurements of the cross-sectional area and the diameters of the vessel. And our initial plan is to go provisional, but when we look at the spider view, I change that plan and think I'm probably going to have to stand at the circumflex. But my strategy is to use IVL and to use the new C2 plus balloon with 120 pulses. You can see on the left that the NC balloon doesn't fully expand as predicted. So we take there for our C2 plus balloon and we line up using the fluoroscopy using the clear stent technology to make sure the electrodes are in the right place. When we start to expand the balloon at four atmospheres, we see it is indeed wasted, as you'd expect. And as we deliver more and more pulses in this section, we're able to get full balloon expansion. The good thing with the extra pulses is that we can be more liberal with our pulse management in this segment of the vessel, and we can make absolutely sure that we have full expansion of the LED. So we continue until we're happy and that we have got full expansion, and then we're able then to go ahead and think about treating this vessel. So we treat the mid to proximal NAD with a synergy stent as mandated in the study. And that's fully expanded, which is quite reassuring. Obviously, we've got the left main to deal with next. So then we take the balloon back and we have 40 pulses left. And despite this being undersized relative to the left main, it is quite effective, initially being under expanded. But after 40 pulses, it fully expands. 
you can see the calcium burden there on the fluoroscopy. Next, we turn our attention to the circumflex. This is actually quite a challenging vessel, uh, not only to wire, but also to deliver equipment. So we initially deliver a stent to the more uh, mid proximal vessel. Um, and then we will take a stent to the proximal uh, vessel and ostium back into the left main stem and perform the pot as you just saw with a 4-5 balloon. At this point then we're ready to do the rewiring um, of the LAD because my strategy in this case is to do a DK culotte and we've used a jaw lumen catheter here to avoid um, any risk of going behind any struts getting the best really uh, place to cross. We remove the gelled wire and then we're able then to perform the first stage kiss with a 3-0 NC in each limb. Once we've performed this, we're then able to co concentrate on the uh, LAD to left main. We use a Synergy Megatron stent, as you can see here, 3528. Again, using fluoroscopy to make sure we've got both overlap and full left main coverage. Perform pop with a 5-0 balloon to ensure we've got optimal stent expansion proximally. And then we're able then to go back with the dual lumen catheter, rewire the circumflex, again making sure we're not abluminal, and perform a final kiss balloon, uh, this time with bigger balloons, 3, 5, uh, 15 in each limb. Then we're going to perform a final pot, and then we have, hopefully, a very good left main uh, angiographically. Um, as you can see there on the right of your screen, there is clearly some disruption that's behind stent in the left main, they were then able to perform the imaging, which is mandated in the trial. That's the circumflex ostium, uh, CSA of around 8. In the LAD, we have a very nice result uh, on IVUS with a CSA of around 13 and the left main around 60, which is what we found at the very beginning. That's what the normal vessel is. For the purposes of the trial, this is what we're aiming for, the Kang criteria. So we're much uh, greater than that. And of course, we know that's important because from Noble and Excel, the sub-studies, show that we need to be bigger in the left main itself. So just the schematic diagram to show you those measurements at the end of the case. So fairly straightforward, really all made possible with the use of this balloon. So calcification increases complexity in the left main, with many tools available, I think best done with imaging. I think IVL is super safe, you don't really get complications. And the great thing about the C2 Plus is the extra pulses, you can take it back, and you can make sure you've got effective lesion preparation without having to use a second device. Thank you very much for your attention.